Welcome back to my channel. My name is Taylor and today's video is going to be a 24 hour reading vlog with a little bit of a twist. I am going to be reading Insomnia by Stephen King and I am not going to go to sleep until I finish it. So rather than have this readathon be just 24 hours of reading and fit as much reading in as I can, I will not be sleeping until I finish this book. So this could go on for as long or as short as I manage to to read this entire book. I chose this book for this experiment sort of 24 hour reading vlog because the title suggests insomnia. I thought it would be very fun and festive for a horror book about not getting any sleep. Our main character is having trouble sleeping and has insomnia so I thought it would kind of add some ambiance and add an extra creep layer for me as a reader if I just don't go to bed until I finish this. I will say I'm a little bit intimidated. I was guessing this was going to be about 500, 600-ish pages for a Stephen King book. I was wrong. This is almost 800 pages, but I still think that I can do it. I do have the physical book and I will be switching off between this and then I downloaded the audiobook version off of Scribd. So I'm just going to be alternating, listening to this all day, potentially into the night. I have a plan. I have energy drinks. I have a lot of tasks to do while I'm listening to the audio audiobook so yes I'm very excited for this reading challenge. Now a little bit more about this book since I for one did not know a lot about it before going in other than the title Insomnia but we are following our main character Ralph Roberts. He's an elderly protagonist and he lives in the town of Derry, Maine so Stephen King fans, IT fans might recognize that town name but we're following Ralph during a very difficult time in his life. His wife has recently passed away Way, and he is finding it very difficult to cope with this loss and he realizes that not only are his sleep patterns getting a little bit wonky after the death of his wife but he is in fact suffering from insomnia. When he starts suffering from insomnia, starts seeing these truly bizarre things in his house and around his town of Derry, Maine and as he gets more and more into the state of insomnia and more and more sleep deprived, he has to question whether these things are truly all in his head and sleep hallucinations or if there's something a little bit darker. Now I did start on the audiobook while I was getting ready, took my dog out for a walk this morning, everything like that, just getting ready for the day. Also while well, I ate breakfast as well so I am actually on page 40 or so and I am on part one which is Little Bald Doctors and I'm going to have to make sure that I keep up with it physically when I'm reading it audio because I've noticed, at least in my copy, there are several illustrations that might go along with his sleep hallucinations, so I'll definitely have to keep an eye out for those. I am excited to be back in Derry, Maine. It is one of my favorite Stephen King books, and we've already seen that Ralph has gone to the Derry Public Library to research insomnia and got help from the librarian, Mike Hanlon, so that was a fun little name drop. I have a feeling that there are going to be a lot of Easter eggs to it in this. Now I do want to give a quick little caveat. I did see on some reviews of this while I was prepping for this video last night that there are a lot of references not only to it but also the Dark Tower series, a series which I have not read yet. So it is making me a little nervous that I might be missing some connections but I'm hoping that there are more Easter eggs that I'll be fine with skipping and then fine with like going back and looking for them upon a reread. 
made rather than things that are integral to the story because otherwise this vlog is not gonna go that great because I have not read any of the Dark Tower series. So fingers crossed by not doing that, I'm not like depriving myself of the reading experience. But other than that, I wanted to keep this introductory update very short and sweet. I will be updating periodically throughout the day and night. I'm very excited for this reading challenge. So let's just get on with it. Let's get on to reading. First official reading update 11.52 and I am 139 pages into insomnia. I did start I think around 9.20 this morning. Like I mentioned earlier, I woke up, did some morning routine sort of things while I listened to the audiobook. I have now switched to the physical book and just getting some physical pages in. I do tend to read faster physically than via audio. That's just the way that my brain processes information. I'm much more of a visual learner rather than an audio learner. So I am enjoying it so far, which is always Always good because I feel like a lot of the times like the Stephen King books that I feel you either hear a ton about them or not a lot about them and I feel like insomnia definitely I don't hear a lot of people talking about I don't see it on a lot of people's top five favorite lists or anything like that so I am glad that I am enjoying this <laughs> because I feel like at page 100 if I wasn't enjoying it uh, this would be a very rough vlog but I am enjoying it um, the reason why I decided to do like this this particular reading experiment because I do have a lot of Stephen King vlogs that I want to do throughout the year. But the reason why I wanted to do this one was because this time last year I was thinking back on the beginning of the pandemic and the beginning of quarantine and this time last year I had a lot of trouble sleeping. Now I have never been like a great sleeper. As a kid I always needed music to be playing when I'd go to bed and still to this day I will put music on, put a sleep timer on before I go to bed or like some ambient sounds, ASMR, not like people talking but just like ambient soundscapes to help me go to bed and even in stretches of time where I am having a good sleep schedule I definitely need like those routine things to get me to bed. I'm not not one of those people who when their head hits the pillow they fall asleep my partner is like that I'm so jealous of him but it usually takes me a while even with all of those sleeping aids to get me to sleep so all that being said I have never been like a super sleeper but it's never been something that's like impacted my life it's just something that like I know I'm just a bit more particular I just need to do a couple more things before going to bed and also I feel like if it's your reality then you're kind of used to it like for example whenever me and my partner talk about this like he is out like a light. He takes really long naps. I'm not a napper. I take a long time to get to sleep. But then contrast.
contrasted with that, I have really, really vivid dreams and he does not. He has more of like anxiety dreams or nightmares. He doesn't really have episodic dreams whereas like a whole plot is taking place. And I'll have like these really wild outlandish dreams that I'll remember the next morning quite frequently. It's definitely a lot more rare for me to wake up and not have any dreams that I remember than wake up and remember my dreams. I'm just a very vivid dreamer. But all that that being said, this time, around this time last year, March, April, May, um, even bleeding a little bit into June, July, but well, that was when I was getting everything back on track, I started suffering. Oh, I don't want to say insomnia because that is like a medical condition and I never got it diagnosed. But I would find myself trying to go to bed, laying awake, being fine with that because normally it does take me some time to fall asleep but then I would look at my clock and it would be like hours later so I was staying up not through any fault of my own to like 4 a.m and that was me getting in bed at like 10 30 or 11 11 30 around that time and just laying in bed staring at the ceiling trying to get to bed until like 4 or 5 and when I managed to fall asleep during those months I would like wake up like once an hour and then it would take me like an additional 30 minutes to get back to bed and then I'd wake up an hour later so very weird things happening in my sleep schedule so where it got to the fact where I just kind of embraced it and would really just stay up until four or five sometimes six and then wake up around 2 p.m and since we were in quarantine that was fine I didn't have like a work schedule so it didn't impact me that much but it was a very like strange stretch of time and I finally got it under control. But then when I was thinking of books to do a readathon with, I thought, why not do insomnia? Because I've never read a horror book with that premise of the sort of staying awake. I've read a lot having to do with dreams and with nightmares, but this seemed to deal with the experience of staying awake and that lonely feeling. It's already been described of like anything can happen at like 4 a.m. and not in like a paranormal magical sort of way, but just it is such a weird time and you feel so lonely during that time. Like obviously, other people are awake but just you know sitting in your living room or even your bedroom like 4 a.m is just a very strange time so I thought that a horror book might genuinely affect me and you know of course my sleep schedule for the past couple months has been the best it's ever been I don't know if it's moving and being in a new time zone and maybe that's suiting me better or just personally I've been like the least stressed out that I've been in a while but my sleep schedule is doing really really great so I'm a little nervous to kind of mess it up with this. So I'm hoping that I don't stay awake too, too long reading this. But I am having a really good time reading this so far. I will say there is a lot in here that I wasn't expecting. Obviously, we were expecting like the insomnia and our main character, Ralph. It very much lays out within the first couple of pages that his wife is going to die and then she dies. And that is kind of the impetus for him not being able to sleep. But there's so much more going on. And what's interesting, a large part of the action so far has to deal with an abortion clinic in the town of Derry and certain people fighting for that to remain open and people fighting against that remaining open. And so that's like causing a lot of town conflict, which I think is really interesting that I had no idea that this was even going to touch on going into the book. I also really like how Ralph and his main group of friends, there are two friends that he hangs out with pretty frequently. They're all retirees. Um, they're all like in their 60s or 70s and I definitely don't read a lot of books where the, our main characters are middle older age slash elderly so I am really enjoying that as well and the sort of introspection and different kind of lens that that has on the story and also with how his age impacts how people treat him and how people kind of treat his insomnia and talk about his insomnia. I think that is all very interesting but that is really all I have. 
Um, if you're not new to Stephen King, you know his books kind of start out very, very slowly. You get to know the characters very, very well. You get to know the town very, very well. And um, there's like a lot of description. So I'm only on chapter five, but they are very long chapters. So I will try and do an update maybe like once every 100 pages or so, maybe every 200 pages because it is again like an 800 page book. So gonna get back to reading this and I will check back in with y'all later. Next update, it is now 3.05 p.m. I am making pretty good progress. I'm on page 311. I just got to part two, The Secret City. It is finally starting to heat up. The plot is kind of starting to progress a little bit more. And I have to say, I am really enjoying this so far, which I'm very pleasantly surprised about. Again, I never really hear people talk about this one, but I'm really enjoying it so far. I don't know if it's whether the fact that we're in dairy again and we're getting lots of Easter eggs. Like there was a conversation with Mike Hanlon in here and he's one of my favorite characters from it. Or if it's just like a slower paced kind of creeping horror, but I'm really enjoying this so far. I will have to say it is very long. So I'm on page 300 or so. There definitely could have been 50 pages easily. Maybe even there could be a case for more, but I feel like a lot of the fat could be trimmed out of this to make it like a more streamlined story. But I think part of the appeal and part of what makes it so creepy is the fact that we are going so slow. It's now been like a year since the beginning of the book to the part where I'm at now. And we're slowly seeing Ralph's insomnia kind of affect his life in more ways than one, how it affects his relationships with people. And then also you're starting to see the hallucinations that he thinks at first are just hallucinations of a person who hasn't been sleeping well for a while, but they might be something more otherworldly, more paranormal. So I don't know how spoilery or how in depth I'm going to get with this book. I'm trying just to keep it like my reactions and not spoil this book so, so much. But I will say there's like a secondary plot with this insomnia that is involving a women's clinic in the town of Derry and there is a lot of conflict between people who want to keep this clinic up and running and people who don't want to keep the clinic open and our main antagonist is at the forefront of that he's you know one of those very ironic pro-lifers who is trying to like bomb this clinic he sent in bomb threats to the clinic you know um, he's threatened to kill a speaker that's coming to the town of Derry to support this clinic. Again, very pro-life of him. Our antagonist, he is at the core of this, but he's also becoming strangely involved in Ralph's life as well. And some of the things that he has said to Ralph makes Ralph think that Ed, our antagonist, can also see these auras and everyone thinks that Ed is kind of a kook, a little bit crazy. The police are obviously watching him for all of these threats that he's made. He has been arrested for violence quite a few times and everyone thinks he's crazy. So when Ralph starts forming not a kinship, he does not like Ed at all and does not support him. But when Ed starts talking about these auras and these different things that Ralph is seeing, Ralph becomes very nervous that there's something bigger at play or that they just have the same brand of insanity, whether it's that or whether it's something a little bit supernatural. So I will say trigger warnings for this one. It is, it does get into violence against women. In the very beginning of the book, Ed beats his wife so terribly and Ralph actually actually helps Ed's wife leave that situation. Um, but they do talk about that issue a lot. 
as well as this abortion clinic being at the forefront of that. So there are a lot of conversations about that. So trigger warning if any of that is a sensitive topic to you. Also with Ralph's wife dying of cancer and then him and his friends all being in like their 70s or 80s, there is a lot of talk about mortality, time running out, lots of discussions like that. And then also with his insomnia based hallucinations, we don't know if that's what it is or not, but there's a lot of talk about there being very scared when you're older about little things where you might think they're nothing but you're worried maybe that they could be the first signs of a mental illness such as dementia so there's a lot of that going on in there so trigger warnings for that it is not very graphic i would say it is a little bit graphic in the beginning especially as we discuss um the domestic abuse and the domestic violence of some certain characters but other than that i'd say the horror is just a very creeping unsettling horror. i do like the audiobook which is good sometimes i feel like stephen king audiobooks are either very hit or miss for me um there are some that i really love there are others i don't love so much thankfully this one and i are getting along great there are like some musical choices that i think are weird in this story like every single time there's a new chapter or a new section there's like a musical interlude which is fine but then the narrator starts talking while this jarring music is still happening and it'll also happen for emphasis in certain parts of it which is hard to focus which i think might be kind of the point of the audiobook it's hard to focus on the audiobook narrator while you're also hearing this jarring music so i can't really pick between the audiobook or the physical book i think they're both i've been switching on and off they've both been enjoyable experiences for me so far so so far so good like i said it's around 3 p.m right now so i am going to dive back into this start reading it physically some more i have noticed I have been getting through it significantly faster when I am reading it physically so I think for the next couple of hours I'm gonna power through and I'm gonna read it physically and then I'll switch to the audiobook later on in the day so that is all for this update so i'm on page 311 right now part three happens at page 513 so i think that will be a good place to do another update <laughs> update 7 03 p.m so i made it to part three page 517 ish and it did take me a while if you notice from the time increments but my partner did come home from work so we spent a little bit of time together and then also i got to the part where i think there was some lore from the dark tower series basically there is this change in circumstances that happens in this book that really transforms this from one plot to another which i can't really share without massively spoiling it and since i haven't read the dark tower series i can't confirm whether or not that is what people are talking about talking about tying this into the dark tower series but there was a very large like monologue section where a character was basically explaining everything that had been going on to our group of main characters so I was really glad that I listened to that part via audiobook because I will say it did get a little tedious. It was a very large chunk of the book was just this character sitting them down and explaining every single thing 
that had happened up until that point and giving an explanation for everything that had happened. So um, that definitely could have been pared down a little bit, but I am now at part three. I don't know if there are any other parts or if this is just like the third and final act because we are getting into the end game. I still have a very large chunk of book left, but the end conflict has been set up. We know what the end conflict of this book is going to be. And I am very intrigued to kind of see with all of the world building elements that have been introduced in here, how this is going to wrap up. This has been a wild ride simply because I had no idea what to expect from this. And yeah, just I'm very surprised at every turn. Um, so I think again, I'm on page 500 or so. There's only 787 pages in this book. So I think that means one, maybe two more updates before I finish this. Um, so this, fingers crossed, unless something terrible happens, I am going to take a break for dinner and relax and eat dinner because pretty much I've been reading nonstop all day today, switching off between the audio and the physical. So I will be not wasting, but taking some more time this evening to eat dinner. But I don't think I'll be up too late tonight, especially if I get the majority of the rest of this book done physically rather than the audiobook. Um, I think this is very doable to finish in the 24 hours. It'll be less than that. And I don't think that I will actually have to stay up all night to finish it. So that's exciting, but yeah, feeling good about this challenge. Feeling very lucky that this book is, I feel like at least for me and the types of books that I can consume like rapid pace, this is definitely a book that is well suited to that. I have read a number of Kings this year where I definitely, even if I ended up enjoying them, couldn't see myself reading at this pace. So yeah, 7 p.m. I'm having a lot of fun. I will check back in with you all in a couple hundred pages or so. to find them, one ring to bring them all, and in the darkness find them, in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Update it is 11:47 p.m. I did take a little bit of a break to eat dinner and just relax for like an hour or so, a little bit before and after dinner. So after that, I went back to reading. It's almost midnight, but I am in the final stretch of this book, and I'm on page 698 out of 787 and i don't want to give too much in this update especially since i paused just because i didn't know if there would be a good break to pause before the ending because i am very much in like the end sequence in this book again i feel like there are more things that were hinted at in here that definitely were easter eggs for the dark tower which i am fine with um it didn't really impact my enjoyment of this at all at least it hasn't yet because at this point in time I have read a substantial amount of Stephen King books and also just within like the constant reader fandom and just like quotes that are thrown around a lot and different terms and things that like you see if you engage with a lot of Stephen King content online like I kind of knew which things were the Easter eggs I feel like for the Dark Tower so even though I didn't get them I understood that they would be easter eggs if that makes sense especially for stephen king's writing too it is nice when you have a favorite author i don't know if anyone else feels like this but once you read a lot of their work and you can kind of figure out how they foreshadow things and especially with authors like stephen king that put in like mundane little details that you wouldn't think are important until they come back up later there were several instances of this in this book and i did manage to pick up on them just because this isn't my first stephen king book and i understand like the kind of details 
that he harps on and sometimes you feel like okay why is he describing all this it's not important and then it turns out to be important later on um and i will say other than the it references in here which i really enjoyed there was also a really heartbreaking one for pet cemetery so i guess just keep that in mind but if you for whatever reason want to read this and didn't want to read it or pet cemetery you totally could and still understand it um and you don't need to read dark tower i'm going to guess because I am having a good time reading this and I'm a red dark tower. So that is going to be it for this update and I will talk to y'all when I am finished with this book. do my final update tomorrow just to wrap up my thoughts about this book but I just finished it and wow what an ending I'm gonna be honest I am usually in bed by like 10 30 or 11 so I'm feeling very tired um but I'm glad that I finished this I finished it in way less time than I thought it would take me so yeah i finished insomnia i will talk to y'all tomorrow so it is now the next morning and i'm here to just give my quick wrap up on insomnia and i really enjoyed this book i really enjoyed my time reading this and i had a lot of fun marathoning it it worked really well for me looking at reviews trying to gather my thoughts before this final section i noticed this is definitely not one of king's most popular books and i think some of the main critiques are ones that i definitely agree with this is a very large book it's almost 800 pages i did enjoy reading it and i am very biased as someone who loves stephen king but i do feel like this could have been the same impact same story in 500 or 600 pages so i feel like there's definitely a lot of things that could be cut had this be the same story so i definitely get those gripes this is very long also this is definitely a book where if you are not a fan of reading king's books where it does feel like almost mundane and then it turns into supernatural i don't think you're going to like this one there is a big tonal shift um, I don't want to compare it to The Outsider because I think they're very different books, but if you're reading The Outsider and you really enjoyed it until it got really supernatural and paranormal, then I don't think you're going to like this because, again, it has like a similar sort of shift from every day to that more cosmic horror and i would say this definitely is more on the cosmic horror side and there are a lot of things where they're either really going to work for you or they're really not with just kind of the big picture ideas and almost king really likes taking myths and mythologies from different cultures or even like folk tales or singular stories and then transforming them into one huge mythology for his universe so if you are not a fan of that for example i would say if you really didn't like what it had to deal with the turtle and all of that symbolism and mythology i think this is very similar in terms of that cosmic side so keep that in mind i'm actually going to set it down next to me because uh, that book is chunky and very very heavy but i am glad that had it not been named insomnia and had that not been something i thought would be a fun play on like a 24 hour readathon and to not go to bed until i finished it i don't think i would have prioritized this book 
whatsoever. Um, it's not one that I hear discussed a lot. So I am thankful that I read it in this vlog because of that. Um, it's definitely not one of my new favorites, but I did really enjoy it. And I do have to say, even though it's not one of my new favorites, um, I think the ending is one of King's strongest endings. I know King often gets blasted for his not so great endings. I definitely think there are some books that don't have the best endings, um, but I do think he ends a lot more of his books successfully than people give him credit for. This one I think is one of the most successful endings just in terms of the themes of the book and what he was trying to convey within the book. I think he did that really well. I definitely wouldn't recommend this as your first Stephen King book by any means, but I will say I noticed on some reviews there are a lot of people saying don't read it or don't read the Dark Tower series before you read this one. Um, I haven't read the Dark Tower series, so slightly biased, but I did enjoy that one and I feel like if you know a bare bones synopsis of the Dark Tower series, you'll understand the Easter eggs that are in here. I would say it has the most connections to the Dark Tower series, but I don't think they impact your readership if you haven't read it. I also don't think that you need to read it. There are some like minor spoilers in it for it, but I don't think it would take away from your enjoyment. I think that there are the most easter eggs peppered throughout this for it. It does take place in Derry, Maine after the events of it have happened so we do see some character cameos. There are some events talked about that slightly spoil some things in it and then there are also just some like comments or talks about things that were in it about like the vibe of the town, the vibe of Derry. Um, so I do think I would recommend reading it before this one. I definitely think it overall is a strong book than Insomnia, but I really enjoyed being back in Dairy. I really enjoyed seeing all those Easter eggs. So again, if you wanted to read this before it, you could just know there are going to be a lot of Easter eggs in there. And then there was also a Pet Cemetery Easter egg that kind of spoils Pet Cemetery. But if you haven't read Pet Cemetery, um, I think it's disguised well enough that you could read this before Pet Cemetery and not have Pet Cemetery spoiled for you. But I thought that was a nice little Easter egg as well. I knew it's Stephen King's backlog can be very intimidating to a lot of people so I definitely don't think this is one where you feel like you have to have read everything else that has been published before this book. Like I said I did really enjoy this. I have read some other Stephen King books that I have enjoyed as well this year but I don't think I could have read them in a day. I think the audiobook was done fairly well and I really enjoyed the physical book as well just switching off back and forth. I will say it is very long. There's only one section that is like a monologue sort of explanation info dump world dump section that I don't know how you would have done it differently to explain everything going on but that was a very lengthy I would guess maybe that was like 50 to 75 pages that was the only place in the book where I really really felt like it could have been done in a different way and overhauled a little bit just to make it more of an enjoyable reading experience because at some point during that I remember I was doing laundry while listening to the audiobook I'm like okay I've been listening to this explanation for a long time. I feel like I get it. Let's move on to the action. But I really enjoyed the characters in here. Um, I think that really shines. This definitely isn't like solely character driven. There is a strong plot in here, but the characterization and the characters I feel like are always where a Stephen King novel shines. You really feel like you get to get inside the heads of our main characters. And I just really enjoyed the explorations in here. Um, I thought there were several moments where I wanted to tear up a bit because it talks about how when you're elderly the world treats you different. You almost lose a sense of personhood as you get elderly and just talking about things of seeing your friends die off one by one and just accepting that as a way of life because you're all older. Um, talking about how your children then kind of turn into a caretaker and how difficult those transitions are and just a lot of really hard conversations like that and a lot of conversations having to deal with loss, the loss of a loved one, kind of recovering after that and how your life is never the same, but just kind of working your way around to a new normal. This book is written in the 90s, so it is still a little bit outdated just in terms of there are some slang that is used. I feel like Stephen King's really good at like capturing the vibe of whenever the books are written. Like when I read a book of his that is set in the 80s, it feels like you're in the 80s, which for the most part is highly entertaining 
and really gets me into the story. However, there are just some like some languages used here and there and they're not even used by our good characters. They're used by the bad characters, but um, it's still a little bit jarring. So just brief triggers. There are some slurs in here for gay men and then there is a very outdated term used to describe an Asian person. So just keep that in mind if you're sensitive to that. And then also just trigger warnings for this does have quite a few deaths. It does talk at length about losing someone to a terminal illness, terminal illnesses in general, and it just talks a lot about the brevity of life and how life, you know, there could be an accident and you could lose someone at any moment. So if discussions of death or losing a loved one or just like the frailty of life and how we could die at any moment, any day could be our last, that could be very triggering to you because that's pretty much a lot of what this book talks about, as well as getting older, having to face your mortality. Um, there are several discussions about abortion and women's rights that also have to deal with violence against women. And just, there are a lot of characters in here that have been abused by men. A woman's shelter is a large part of this. And um, King doesn't shy away from talking about the abuse that these women have suffered. And so that does get a little bit graphic as well one of our main characters her husband beats her and she leaves to go to this shelter with her daughter that's a huge character arc of her is leaving her husband so it does really dive into those issues as well if you're sensitive to that but yeah I think that's really all I have for this I will mention um I finished way earlier than I thought I was going to finish I think I finished after midnight um and I was still like amped and awake I had been preparing to maybe finish at around 3 a.m um and I did end up staying up until about 3 a.m. and I actually like read some of another book that I'm not going to discuss here because it is insomnia centric. But I am happy to report that even though this does talk about sleep issues a lot and insomnia a lot, I did get a good night's sleep once I finally went to bed. So all good there. But that is going to be the end of this video. If you liked it, please be sure to give a thumbs up, leave a comment down below. Let me know if there are any Stephen King books that you'd like to see me do a dedicated vlog on. I will, if I can remember, like I think at the end of this video it'll pop up some videos for you to check out next. I do have a Stephen King TBR of books that are on my priority TBR so maybe check out there and let me know if there are any Stephen King books you'd like to see a vlog on and subscribe for more content from me. Stay safe, stay spooky, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye!